Hello friends, welcome to our channel Electronic Stuff. In my previous video, we discussed about half wave rectifier. Today, in this video, let us discuss about full wave rectifier. Now, let us see the definition of a full wave rectifier. As it is defined as a rectifier that converts the complete cycle of alternating current signal into pulsating DC. It means it is the rectifier which gives output for positive half cycle as well as for negative half cycle. And we have already discussed about half wave rectifier in which only one half of the AC signal either positive half or negative half is utilized to generate a pulsating DC output. But in case of this full wave rectifier, both the half cycles positive and negative of the input AC signal are utilized in order to generate a pulsating DC output. So see here, if we apply the sine wave as input of this full wave rectifier, then we will get this type of output waveform. So as you can see, it passes the positive half cycle and it inverts the negative half cycle. Now see here friends, the full wave rectifier circuit can be constructed in two ways, either a center tapped full wave rectifier or bridge full wave rectifier. Now in this video, let us first understand the construction and working of a center tapped full wave rectifier. So as you can see here, a center tapped full wave rectifier circuit consists of a step down transformer and two diodes D1 and D2 and a load resistor RL. And a sinusoidal AC source is also present which supplies AC signal to the circuit. And this rectifier circuit is called a center tapped because in this secondary half of the transformer we have two sections, upper section and lower section. And upper section is from this point to this point and lower section is from this point to this point. And whatever voltage appear across this upper section the same voltage will appear across this lower section. And this is the reason why it is named as center tapped. Now let us see the working of this center tapped full wave rectifier. So when an input AC signal is supplied to this circuit, the step down transformer which is present here converts high voltage input AC signal into low voltage AC signal. Now during positive half cycle of the input AC signal, the upper section of the secondary winding becomes positive while the lower section of the secondary winding becomes negative. So during positive half cycle, the point A at the secondary transformer becomes positive with respect to the point C. And this makes the diode D1 forward biased and diode D2 reverse biased. And we already know that if the diode is in forward bias, then it allows the flow of electric current. And when the diode is reverse biased, then it blocks the flow of the electric current. And in this full wave rectifier circuit, during positive half cycle of the input AC signal, the diode D1 which is present here is forward biased and diode D2 is reverse biased. Therefore, we can say that when the top half of the transformer secondary winding carries the current and this produces a positive load voltage across load resistor. Now during the negative half cycle of the input AC signal, the source polarity reverses. Now see here, the point B at the secondary transformer becomes positive with respect to point C. And this makes the diode D2 forward biased and diode D1 is reverse biased. So at this point, only the second half of the transformer secondary winding carries current. And this also produces a positive load voltage across the load resistor as before. So as a result of this, we can say that in full wave rectifier, DC voltage is obtained for both positive half cycle as well as for negative half cycle. Now let us see performance parameters of a full wave rectifier. So see here, first let us understand about DC current or average current of a full wave rectifier. So DC current of a full wave rectifier can be given as area under one cycle of curve divided by base. So see here friends. Area under one cycle of the curve means it is the area between the point 0 and 2 pi. And we already know that area under a curve between two points is found out by doing a definite integral between the two points. So by this we can write IDC is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi which is the base and integrating ID theta between the limits 0 to 2 pi. And see here friends, in this output waveform, Whatever output we are getting from 0 to pi, the same output we are getting from pi to 2 pi also. So that's why instead of integrating from 0 to 2 pi, we are integrating from 0 to pi and multiplying with 2. 
So this equation can be written as IDC is equal to 1 by 2 pi into 2 times integrating 0 to pi ID theta. Now we can cancel out these two twos and substituting i is equal to im sin theta d theta in this equation we will get idc is equal to 1 by pi integration from 0 to pi im sin theta d theta and here we can take out im out of this integration so idc is equal to im by pi integrating from 0 to pi sin theta d theta and we know integration of sin theta is minus cos theta so in this next equation, we will get im by pi into minus cos theta between the limit 0 to pi. And if we substitute the limit, we know that cos pi is equal to minus 1 and cos theta is equal to 1. So we can write this above equation as im by pi minus of minus 1 and minus 1. So this is nothing but 2 im by pi. So this is the final expression for DC or average load current of a full wave rectifier. Now friends, let us find the RMS load current of a full wave rectifier. So IRMS is equal to area under one cycle of curve whole square divided by the base under root. And we can write the above expression as square root of 1 by 2 pi which is the base and integration of I square d theta between the limit 0 to 2 pi. And as we already discussed earlier, in this output waveform, whatever the output we are getting from 0 to pi, the same output we are getting from z pi to 2 pi. So instead of integrating from 0 to 2 pi, we are integrating from 0 to pi and multiplying it with 2. So this equation can be written as square root of 1 by 2 pi into 2 times integration of i square d theta between the limits 0 to pi. Now we can cancel out these two twos here and by substituting i is equal to im sin theta d theta we can write this equation as square root of 1 by pi integration of 0 to pi im square sin square theta d theta. So irms is equal to square root of here we can take im square out of the integration. So im square by pi integration from 0 to pi and here sin square theta we can write it as 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2 d theta. Now let us take this 2 outside of the integration. Then IRMS is equal to square root of IM square by 2 pi integration from 0 to pi 1 minus cos 2 theta d theta. Now we can write this equation as IM square by 2 pi and if we integrate 1 with respect to d theta then it will be theta. And integration of cos 2 theta is equal to sin 2 theta by 2 between the limit 0 to pi. Now by substituting the limits, we get square root of im squared by 2 pi into pi. And here pi and pi get cancel each other. And this equation can be written as im by root 2. So im by root 2 is the final expression for RMS load current of a full wave rectifier. So friends, this is all about full wave rectifier construction and working and some performance parameters. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos.